Hello and welcome to this episode of T-Tech. Today we are setting up QoS on OpenBSD with the EPF firewall. I do hope you enjoy this one and let's get into it. All right, hello and welcome to this episode of T-Tech. So we are going to configure quality of service today. We're using the OpenBSD's PF firewall to do this. Uh, what I want to explain before we get into it further is there's two different types, basically. What we're showing today is more of policing or traffic shaping. Okay, there's a different type that OpenBSD can do called um, um, traffic marking. And that's in networks where when you send the packet through one router or out of an IP phone, etc., you want to give it a marking. So when it's sent through the other router, it's sent through with the same priority. So end to end, that packet will have the same level of service and delay. This isn't what this is about. This is just dealing with one router's queues. All right. So basically, we're going to change the speed of how fast packets can get out of our LAN. All right. So with all that out of the way, I have three VMs here. We have client one. It's at static IP. So I have 192.168.10.100. And client two. Um, that was 10.101. Uh, so here is the firewall and what I've done is set up one IP on this side here and we have another interface on this side um, it's already set up for routing and all that but what we have to do is configure the firewall so under at cpfconf we're going to go ahead here <coughs> excuse me I've set LAN win macros some basic uh, runtime options drop in everything to start and we're passing the land traffic in and I actually didn't take that out from testing so you get a little um, preview of what we're gonna do <laughs> we're gonna take that out I apologize so we're going to uh, pass all the land traffic in and then we're passing it out on the WAN and adding it to that WAN address we've we've done this before so the first thing with queuing is we're basically making a queue that will have a certain amount of bandwidth even if our interface is say a gigabit interface we can make that seem like it's a lot less and carve it up in different uh, sections so we're gonna start by saying queue and this has to be above all of your filter rules pass and block we're gonna say queue on and then we're going to use the LAN interface macro. And I'm sorry. Q and then the name of the Q. This is full bandwidth. All right. Q full bandwidth on LAN. The bandwidth of this Q. Let's see. We're going to have 5M. And when you're doing queuing, they have K, M, and G. And if you read the man page, K is for kilobits, M is for megabits, G is for gigabits. So make sure you, you have the right uh, measurement for what you need. We're starting with a Q on the interface of 5 megabits. So remember that. That's our entire bandwidth on this interface. Even though this is a gigabit interface. <coughs> so let's see here. Bandwidth 5. And we want to do... The minimum bandwidth is 5, and the max is 5. Now, below this, we actually want to have, and actually we don't even need the min and max. So, I'm sorry, when we first start, we want bandwidth 5. And then we want these cues underneath it. So we're going to make, to to implement this, I'm going to make two macros. One for client one that has that IP. And then we'll do another for the other IP address. So 
we're going to make Q, CL1, and that's going to have the parent of full bandwidth. And the bandwidth of the Q is going to be 1M. Okay, 1M, minimum is 1 uh, megabit, and max is 1 megabit. We're going to make another Q for the second client. Same parent, the same amount of bandwidth as well. So minimum 1, max of 1. And we're also going to make one more queue as a default queue for everything else with a bandwidth of 500 kilobits. So right now we have four queues. So this is the first step of the configuration. We have one queue here that has all of the bandwidth that we want to have on the LAN interface in this case. Okay. And then the second queue is for the first client in the lab. And then we're giving that one megabit of this queue up here. Same thing for client two. And at the bottom with DEF, the default queue, um, everything else will go into this queue and be and then have that speed. Okay, so that's our four queues, and then the last one there is the default queue. So now the queues by themselves don't do anything. We need a way to classify what traffic goes into the queues. So we need to write some rules for this. So under your block drop all, we're going to say pass in, but it has to be quick um, on the LAN interface, and we want to use client one here we want to say to any destination and this is the difference we want to say set Q and CL1 and keep state and we're gonna say the same thing for our second client set Q CL2 keep state and on that end rule, um, we're going to set any other land traffic. We want that to go to the DEF queue, the default queue. All right. So we've made our queues, and now we have our rules that will put traffic in those queues for us. So very important. We want to save the file. And we want to do pfctlnf dash nf rather etsy pfconf. Okay, we don't have any errors or anything. You want to flush uh, everything. You don't have to flush everything. You can just flush queues or rules. But for this lab, it's all right. Now let's do an sq to show the queues. We have our four queues. If we show the rules, we have our rules for that. Now, to monitor this, we want to do sys, sysstat, q, and then we want to give a delay for updates. We're going to say 2 in this case. All right. And as you can see right now, they're all empty. There's no traffic that has come into this firewall yet. Let's come down to client 1. And I'm using wget and just, I searched for speed test files just to find a big like, zip file of random data to download. And when you're running this, if you want to do the lab like I'm doing, do dash dash report dash speed equals bits. Otherwise, you're going to get it in bytes and you're going to think uh, queuing is not going to, is not working the same way that you think it should be. So we're going to hit enter on this. And there we go. So, a few things to take note of. One, the speed isn't going above one megabit. All right. That's the first thing. Second thing is looking at CL1. There's packets filling up that queue. 
and there's you know packets being sent out of the queue and it's actually has 23 well 33 packets in the queue now but the reason the queue is getting bigger is because the client one is actually trying with TCP to send more traffic into the network it's called windowing the whole goal is it's trying to send more and more traffic in the network per second but with shaping or policing in QoS the the amount of packets per second needed to get higher and higher bandwidths it got a little bit right there um, when those come into this queue it's gonna fall off the edge it's called tail drop <coughs> and that actually keeps the speed of the connection lower all right so that's it naturally makes TCP stay within that level let's go over to client 2 and do the same thing um, let's see right here and as you can see he's staying within but something that wouldn't happen if we didn't have queuing is client 1 could send much more data quicker than client 2 and then if we had only one queue you would introduce queuing delay where the packets are sitting in the queue waiting to be sent out by the router so then client 2's packets would actually get intermingled with client 1's and because there's more of client 1's packets in the queue than client 2's client 2 will have more delay because of that the overall speed of his connection would be lower but because we're splitting up these clients and everything in different queues and giving them a limit to how fast they can send packets out we're giving each computer a fair allocation of bandwidth and we're actually making their TCP protocol behave how we want it to in the network not how it normally behaves which is where it just tries to send as much as possible over time so these right now are sending at one megabit and that is all they're allowed but if we stop both of these okay and let's go back up and you, you'll see naturally that the queues go lower don't have anything on them um, let's go um, into here again and what I want to do is for client 2 I'm going to say that client 2 gets 2 megabits of bandwidth alright so now of course we're going to flush everything and reload and let's double check with SQ again now that's 2 set up our verification all right so now client one is going client two is going all right but you already noticed something different client two is allowed to put more packets into its queue so its bandwidth for its connection is allowed to go higher as you can see it's at its two megabit limit and even bursting over but you know then we're introducing the tail drop and it's making the speed of the connection go down but as you see client one over here if I can get my mouse is at about one megabit but client two is at its two megabits you can see in the queues as well naturally client two's queue has more packets per second going through it because it's allowed to because of the rules of the queue we set but in that case that does mean client 2 sends more per, more bandwidth per second and client 1 cannot so th this is the shaping though in um, you know in our OpenBSD router and you can do the same thing in most any network equipment now remember this is a little bit different than marking here we're just concerned with the time it's queued in one router 
with marking you're telling every router and device like a switch or whatever along the path to um, treat the packet the same way and give it the same level of service because even with this think about this if we have that client send faster but when it gets to our ISP's router it still doesn't queue them any different we've sort of defeated the purpose but it, for, for our for, for what we're concerned with we're just concerned with how fast we can access the LAN access through the LAN to the WAN we can't control the speed on the WAN I mean that that is fixed for you know what your services you're paying for okay one last note I want to add to this because obviously it's not just helpful to have two clients um, what you can also do is we could modify this rule like pass in quick on land from you know whatever if we had a DMZ interface we could say pass it on you know DM well it's not a good example like guest we could say from our guest network to any destination and then you could have a queue you created called guest to keep that entire network or you know it could be a VLAN it could be an, a you know that subnet in other words you can keep it going a certain speed because of queuing so that that's the really cool thing with this as I was saying you can do it um, per an entire network and or per you know VLAN interface uh, whatever you want you would just make more queues on each interface and then make these smaller queues for each you know piece of traffic what I was gonna say that I remembered is you can even slow down bandwidth to certain uh, sites ports or protocols so anything you can filter on in a PF rule you can put that traffic in a queue so you know any website you may want to slow down speed up any subnet going to that website maybe the IT subnet gets faster access to you know cisco.com whereas everyone else gets you know slower access or, or something similar so you can combine all these ideas together in our QoS so with all that though we're not going to save that because it'll mess up our configuration but so just so you can compare though that's what it should look like if you want to uh, do this there's no difference in a real network the, um, the the VM here is bridged to my real interface it's going out to the internet during the demo so yeah with all that though um, I hope that helped I hope it was enjoyable and as always I'm Tyler with T-Tech thank you for viewing and have a very nice day